wafer thin USB power bank with a mirror on one side and it's got a protective film over the mirror and so you can't see my workshop uh, I'll be leaving that protective film on That this is all you're going to see oh clutter, 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 clutter clutter in all directions in the bench it's an outrage so this thing is uh, rated capacity it's made by Intempo and uh, came from TK Maxx in, in, uh, where did I get this from? it was probably from the Douglas one in on their man and uh it has a rated capacity of 2,000 milliamp hour and an output of 1 amp. So let's uh, put that to the test. So let's plug this in. I've already tried this with various loads and uh, it's got the annoying quirk that uh, if you plug in a very light load like Christmas lights into it, it will power them for so long and then it will sort of go into a sort of sleep mode and then it just tests output. So here we go. Uh, 5.2 volts, so let's start pumping the current up. The voltage has dropped off straight away. It's down to almost 4 volts. 4.78 to be fair, that's not almost 4 volts. I was, that, that's one of my pet hates about LCD displays. They take the text right up to the very edge where the shadow of the bezel is going to actually hide it. So let's uh, keep going. It's actually 4.72... Oh, it just cut off. What was that? Let's, uh, let's start that again, shall we? So let's uh, wake it up again. Right, okay. 5.2 volts. Is that in focus? Let's uh, double check. Yes, it is appearing in focus. 5.25. 260 milliamps. At 600 milliamps, it's dropped to 4.87. 800 milliamps, 4.66. Oh, I, I didn't see that again. What did that get to? Oh, that was it. It's one amp. Oh, it cuts straight out. Okay, it's a bit delicate. Rightio. Uh, let's uh, let's take it to bits then. Now, this came with this lead. I don't know if I mentioned that in this video already. But this uh, came with a lead and it says only use this lead for charging it uh, and things like that. And, you know, you've got so many devices with USB leads that you're going to use whatever lead comes to hand. So, working the basis that the ports are on this end, I'm guessing there's going to be a lithium cell in round about here. So, let's uh, gingerly pry in. Let's make sure I've got my explosion containment pie dish handy. Got to keep that handy just in case things go thermal nuclear. I'm hoping this is not glued to the battery. I have a horrible feeling that's glued to the battery. That's quite annoying. Let's uh, take a wee peek inside here. Oh, it's glued to the battery. Okay, that's not... Oh, it really is well glued to the battery. This is where I worry about ripping the side of the battery right off. Oh, they really don't want you going into this, do they? Right, okay, give me a moment. I'm going to try and heat this up and then soften the, uh, soften the glue and prise it off. I'll be back in a moment. This is firmly in the category of opening an iPhone, the battery is glued in solid onto the metal. I've got a torch in the tip of my eyes here. That's unpleasant. That's very unpleasant. Ugh. Uh, even it, my pen is now glued onto it. That is horrible. It's also hot. Can you see me sweating? That's also excitement. Oh. oh, well, that's no fun. So what do we have here? I've glued the pen to it now. Ugh. We have the lithium pack here. I'll just wipe the sweat off my hands. It's absolutely roasting hot here, not my temperature at all. Um, 
it says 2000 milliamp power. The electronics are all in this little circuit board at the end. Is that actually screwed in? There is a little screw in that. Let's uh, see if we can liberate that out then. Let's see if we can get the whole lot out. Actually, the battery is going to be glued into the other side as well. Oh, this is very unserviceable. I mean, it's not designed to be serviced. It's not designed to be opened. One bit of captain tape is all that's separating these solder joints from the metal plate. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Uh, the... Where's a screwdriver? Is that screwdriver going to fit in there? Yes, it will do. Let's see if we can uh, shimmy this module out. Let's uh, zoom down it. Should I try and break? I don't think I'll try and break the image up. I think it's just going to swamp out if I brighten it up. Let's uh, try and just prise this up. Uh, the joys of taking apart lithium power banks. Maybe I should have discharged this beforehand. Oh, the USB connector is actually built into the plastic case to save space. Here is the chip. It's got battery protection. It's got the almost certainly the DW01. I'm going to get my reading glasses on for this. This it looks quite interesting. It looks as though it might be fairly good quality, particularly with the fact it was cutting out. Um, when it was on a very light load, which is a bit annoying for some of these units, particularly if you want to run a very light load. DW01A and the MOSFET. So those are the usual MOSFET protection uh, bits. Then the chip we've got here is a power... T I'm going to have to use a even power magnifying glass this one TP4303F TP4303F One moment, let's find out what that is Hmm, not a huge amount of data as you'd expect It's a very simple chip, it's got very little in the way of support components but they seem to have optionally added that extra protection for the battery I guess they probably didn't think that this was uh, good enough the, the protection of the actual circuit itself So, uh when you take away the support components around the actual lithium cell itself, the uh, DW01 and protection MOSFET, which are in this area, all you're really left with is the integrated circuit, a few capacitors, there's a the 210 microfarad over there. Um, you've got the little capacitor and filter, which I think is there. You've got the inductor and a couple of LEDs over here, and that's more or less it. It's very, you know, I see a few other capacitors, but I wonder if they're partly to do with the uh, protection circuitry on the other side. Or are they just playing safe and adding a bit of extra filtering? It could be across, the, actually, it could be across the cell itself. So it's a fairly typical little uh, chip. There's, I was hoping there was going to be more information about what's inside it, but uh, there wasn't. Um, I did find one other picture uh, drawn out, a schematic drawn out by a chap called Alexander Berger. Good name. And uh, he'd uh, drawn out a schematic from another power bank with uh, this chip and the, uh, the DW01 protection. I didn't uh, use his picture here because I didn't want to do so without permission. And, uh, I'll be uploading this tonight. Uh, so that was kind of ruled out because he'd spent some time reverse engineering it. Uh, he'd made an interesting modification. He tapped in at the charge point on a power bank and added an external TP4056 circuit to actually charge the battery independently of this, which meant this could actually put out the 5 volts while the cell was being charged independently. It was basically a little un uninterruptible power supply for his, a Raspberry Pi. But this is uh, what you'd expect. It's really, it is just filler at the sides. The rectangular, well, square almost, lithium cell in the middle and then the circuitry just tucked in the end for, for the ports. So it's really what you'd expect of this, but uh, it's not super high current output, but it's a useful little device nonetheless.